Lord, we give you praise. 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 We give you God, we give you praise. Oh, God, we bless your name. How many give him praise in 2018? Oh, glory to God. God, we bless your name. We bless your name. We thank you. There's none like you in all the earth. God, we bless your name. Oh, glory to God. Oh, yes, 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 yes. My soul says yes. Oh, yes. God, we bless your name. When I think on the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done, for me. Oh, God, I bless your name. Oh, God, we bless you. We bless you. I feel a praise in the house. Somebody say, I feel a praise in the house. I feel a praise in the house. Oh, God, we bless your name. Bless your name. Bless you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. God wants to bless his people. How many know God come to bless his people? God, we bless you. Yeah. Yes. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you. We've come out this morning to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. If it had not been for you who was on our side, we love you today. Now let the words of our mouth, the meditation of our heart, be acceptable in your sight, for you are God, our strength, and our Redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen. God love you. You can be seated if you can I, I think even in the cold weather you can praise him you can even in the cold weather you can thank him Lord I thank you you, you know something that I've learned over this 67 years tenure it could be so much worse there's a reason there's a reason God does what he does, and we just thank him. I'm, uh, 
I'm here this morning, praise God, to just touch on a few things. I, I, I get into this thing uh, about friends, friends. I thank God for friends. I thank God this church needs to be friendly. We need to be friendly, folks. Friendly to one another. Just, amen. It's good to, amen. We, uh, I was sharing with some. For 20 years, I worked out in this weather, so I'm kind of happy. I can come out, come back in when I get ready. It was a time I didn't have that choice. I had the choice, but I, I opted to stay out in the cold and collect that check. I can recall times I climbed up about 12 stories high on the silo, and the steps were nothing but ice. And you just held on, just walked up and held on. I looked over into Delaware with the breath blowing in my face, and it seemed like it was just freezing. And today, I tell you what, as cold as it might seem, God is still God. Amen. Give it about five months, and it's going to be warm. Give it about six months, and it's going to be too hot. How many say, then it's too hot? It's just turn the air up, pastors. Oh, my God, turn the air up. Turn the air up. I wish we could. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. So we're going to thank God. I want to touch on something. I was, I was man, I was uh, up late studying. I was in a, a frenzy there. My wife, I know she wondered what I was doing. I don't know if she was asleep, but I was, man, I was just, there we go. I was reading some stuff. We want to talk about becoming a friend of God. Becoming a friend of God. And turn your Bibles, if you will, to the 18th chapter of the book of Genesis. Yeah, I got my big Bible here. Wow. Yeah, the 18th chapter, I'm trying to read here, but I got so much. The 18th chapter of the book of Genesis. Becoming a friend of God. And it's amazing that as I was reading this and studying, that God only called one man in the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, his friend. Everybody else was his servant, but it wasn't until we go into the New Testament that God gave us the honor of becoming friends. Isn't that something? The honor of being a friend of God. I'm going to talk about seven things that would help you become a better friend of God. Boy, I'm, I'm learning. Boy, I'm, I'm getting into the new age here. Boy, I got my little tablet. Oh, man, you better look out. Before all my tablets was, was paper, but now it's first thing we're going to talk about is, I'm going to give you the seven because I don't think I'll, you know me, I, w I might get to all seven, but I may not, but I'm going to read them. Uh, a friend of God continually worship him. A friend of God continually worship him. A friend of God prioritize time with him. That means a friend of God gives him time. A friend of God are zeal zealous or zealous in serving him. A friend of God. A friend of God are generous in offering to him. And a friend of God inspires faith in others. A friend of God are growing in the knowledge of God's will. And last, a friend of God is an intercessor. And all this we're going to touch, if we can, time permits. In the book of the 18th chapter, we're going to start reading. Please stay with me if you can. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre and sat, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him, and when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed 
himself towards the ground. One thing I, I want to just, uh, once God called Abram out of Haran from his family, he said, uh, get away from your family. I'm going to take you and show you a place. And, uh, and the thing that uh, I was just thinking on, uh, Abram heard God's voice. He heard it, and he obeyed it. I was talking, uh, and then the Holy Spirit would just lay this in my spirit. I said, Lord, you know, I like, I'm over 30, I've been saved over 40-some years, and I still, you know, so I want to hear God's voice audibly. God said, you really, you know, you've heard me on numerous occasions. You just, it's what you want. He said, every time you read my word, I'm speaking to you. How many knows? And, and the Lord appeared unto him. Who said that? A lot of people, 40, over 40 brothers wrote this book. And every one of them pieced it together to such a, 40 individuals over the course of thousands of years put together this book. And it seemed like one book. One book, it just flows. Well, these three individuals and, and from study, they said one of them was uh, God, Jesus, came. And this is something because a friend will visit you. How many know that? A friend will come to your house. How many know a friend can come to my house? Not, not just anybody going to come to my house. Most people that I don't know, I meet them at the door. They don't just walk in. How many have somebody you don't know just walk in your house? If he does, he's a thief. Now, a thief will walk in your house or get in your house without your invitation. Amen. Normally, people that walk in my house, I know you. And if I know you well, I'll let you stay for a while. Amen. Depending on how friendly we are, you can sit down at my table and eat. Amen. You, you're just not anybody going to sit at my table and eat. Amen. How many know that? If I don't know you, of course I'll offer you something to eat, but if I don't know you well, you ain't going to sit down and chat and chew, you know. We find here that these three individuals came and look at what Abraham, he lifted up his eyes and looked and three men stood and when he saw them, he ran to meet them uh, from the tent door and bowed himself towards the ground. And he said, my Lord, now this is deep. Now, Abraham, this is, this is something that I've learned over my tenure of 40 plus years of the Lord. After a while, you know God. How many know what I'm telling you? After a while, you kind of know God. You, 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 now, there's times, you know, you can hoodwink me. But I've learned, praise God, to stop getting mad with hoodwinkers because you lose your joy over dumb stuff. Amen. Don't lose your joy over dumb stuff, man. Just, amen. Pete, the devil will steal your joy if you want to just give it up. He, if you give it up, he'll take it. Amen. People have a tendency of just rubbing you. Amen. But I've learned to turn my back and let them scratch my back. Look, 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 that's the deal. Don't let them, amen. Glory to God, that was just good. Don't let them turn your back. You ain't got to, you know, even now, I'm, I'm beginning to feel even somewhat, you know, compassionate towards the president. Last night I was laying in the bed and it took me a minute. And I started, amen, I started feeling compassionate. Compassion. Uh, amen. I said, Lord, you know what? This, you know, and I'm going to share this with y'all because you need to hear this. I'm doing some study. And God literally gave Jerusalem to the Jews. He did. Yeah, matter of fact, you're going to read it here. He told Abraham, uh, here, I'm giving you this property. The amount of property that God gave the Jews, they didn't take it all. But they took Jerusalem. As a matter of fact, if you notice, Jerusalem was back and forth. If you read in the book of Genesis, Melchizedek, which wasn't his name, the name really means king of righteousness. That's what it means. He was a king and a priest. There's only other, only other king and priest was, was Jesus. He was out of the tribe of Judah, and he carried the Levitical priesthood. And then the only other priest in this is us. God called us pre-king and priest. My God, you better look out. Look, look, look. So he made us. Melchizedek, he came, and if you notice, he just appeared. But I want to say this one. I got really tight when, 
You know, President Trump said, uh, you know, I'm giving Jerusalem back to Jews. You ain't give Jerusalem back to Jews. D J Jerusalem is the Jews' property. It really is. We can fight and argue and fuss and do what we want to do. But here's the thing about it. God uses Pharaoh. He'll use whoever he will to stir the pot. But here's the thing. When God get ready to move, he's going to move. So we don't have to worry about what's going to come out of this thing. We, I think before anything happened, if anybody push a button, by the time the button push, I think I'm going to be caught up. God bless my heart. I believe before the button push, we're out. That, look, it said in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, push, twinkle, gone. Gone, glory to God. That's what, isn't it good to be saved? Man, my God, that's why we got to want everybody saved. Everything saved. Walk in the house and everything got to get saved. I want nothing going to hell. Everything saved. If we get that heart, we, we stop just mealy mouthing God. We get down. See, when, when we stand and uh, let me get back into this word. I'm going all crazy because I've got too much. I ain't got that much time in the Lord. So this brother came and he bowed himself and he said, my Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away. I pray thee from thy servant uh, a little, uh, let a little water I pray. And then back in that day, glory to God, if you've seen a stranger, a lot of times they would, they would work with a stranger because they didn't have Motel 6, you know, uh, Marriott's. They didn't have them. They just took people in. You know, I'm going to say this because I need to. Uh, back in the day, we used to take folk in. No, I mean, you know, amen. Take folk in. Now, oh, my God. It's a whole different day. They come back from the convocation. They riding. We, we went to Florida. Had 40, 42 people on that bus. My God, I was a crazy man back then. Cynthia should have smacked me and said, wake up. <laughs> 40, 40 some of us loaded on a 64 GMC bus going to Florida. I had worked on that bus so much, I, was just, I had dreams and nightmares in that bus. We driving to Florida, going to Florida. <laughs> God bless my heart. And uh, we stopped so much, it seemed like we took us five years to get to Florida. <laughs> A two-day trip, a one-day trip took us four days. We got there. We got to Florida. <laughs> that was not a journey. How many went with me on that journey? That was a journey. That was a journey. The kids tell me we just enjoyed ourselves. I had nightmares. <laughs> My God, I couldn't sleep. I, couldn't. I said, Lord, is this what Moses felt like? I feel, oh, my God, I can see why he said I can't talk. Get me somebody else to drive this bus. And thank God for Elder and, and Deacon Swanson. But we got to, we got to Florida, 40-some of us, 40-some of us. And, and uh, when we got there, our family in Florida rallied, and not one person slept in a hotel. Not one. I got to say this because it's just on me. Not one. They just dispersed. Boom. And by the time I got you know, my senses from that long trip in the bus, everybody was gone and had a place. They just took the load off. Ain't nobody, we ain't spent not one dime in a hotel till we got to. Hey Amen. How many remember that? We can't do that now because it's just different. Okay. So he told, he's talking to, now, Abraham knew something was there. You, you can, have you ever been around people that automatically you just feel friendly towards? I've seen people, my God. Now, I've seen some folk I don't even want to be bothered with. But I've seen some, and God, this is deep because you can see all these years, this man's 75, now we're right at about 100 years. So 25 years, he's been in and out with God. When I say in and out, when he went to Egypt, that was kind of an outish because he really, see, let me share something with you. Whenever you see going into Egypt, that's going into the world, literally. So a famine came, and Abraham and, but what he told Sarah was a, was a, was a good hookup. Because I, I said, man, when I first said I said, you lied straight up. Well, he didn't really lie because Sarah was his 
father's second wife's child. So he married Sarah. He said, look, I'm your brother, which he was. The reason he said that because back then they can kill you for your wife. Well, I've been a dead man since they killed me a long time for you. I just, thank God those days are gone. But do you know some, some people will kill you for a, love, for a wife? Or, well, they're doing it. I'm not just saying that. They're doing it. Well, back then they could do it legally and get away with it. But, but here was the deal. Because he said, I, I am your brother, the individual that wanted to marry the, the, the sister had to barter. Remember what Laban did when, when Rebecca was given up? So he said, I'm in a good place. So Pharaoh was saying, what can we give you? Man, that's a good-looking woman. Our camels, donkeys, we're going to hook you up. And they did. When you read it, they hooked him up. So Sarah was a good, that was a good thing. Before I thought he was just lying straight out. That was a smart thing. But sometimes God got to stir your pot to get you out of the world. And he used that to get him, get to step in. Now, this is ironic because you don't read nowhere in there where they said the famine had ceased. It's just that God put him in place and said, you got to leave here. You can't stay here. How many ever been in a place that God said, you got to leave here? You will be staying here. I don't tell you to leave a job, but sometimes God wants you to move in position. You get mad. God telling you, promote. I don't want to promote her. I didn't want to promote him, but I didn't. I said, Lord, I'm as high as I want to go. I'm good. But then I found out if I had to promote it up, my, but that's okay. And Abraham hastened to the tent. Now, I want to also share something with you. Abraham knew that this world was not his home. Even though God said, I'm going to give you this land. You notice he had tents. He would pitch his tent. Now, of course, we talk about nomads, but Abraham could have set up his own place. He really could have. He would have said, okay, I'm settling here. That man had a trained army. He had 300 plus trained. Now, I'm not talking about they were servants coming out of the kitchen, you know, taking their aprons off, grabbing a sword. No, he had 300 plus trained ninjas. Had to, well, they had to be sharp because they went and took a king out. The Deed brothers were no joke. These were a group of men that you didn't want to just mess with. They were under his command, under his authority. When I read that, I said, my God, because I read it. And Abraham, when they took Lot, and he just went after him. I'm like, man, with 300 men, are you serious? No, no, he had some trained, like some of like David's men. When you read about David's men. David had some men, boy, one man jumped into a pit, jumped into a pit, glory to God with a lion, a lion, what a lion, and he took, glory to God, and killed the, I ain't grabbing no, God bless his heart. Those some, some good brothers. That's the kind of brothers you want with you. With you, yeah. Yes, sir. And look at this here, and Abraham hastened to his tent. So Abraham Glory to God knew that even though God, let me share something with y'all. This is not your home. Don't act like, see, when you're worldly and in the world, this is your home. But after a while, the older I'm getting, the better I'm feeling about heaven. How many, I'm feeling good about heaven, man. That's when you know you saved. I'm starting to feel good about heaven. Oh, I ain't ready to die just yet. But look, let me tell you something. I know where I'm going. I'm not sitting here wondering. I wonder if I'm going to go to heaven. I'm, uh, no, I know I'm going to heaven. That's when you get to tenacity of the relationship. So he goes on and Abraham hastened. Look at it. And Abraham hastened to Sarah, uh, the tent unto Sarah and said, make thee ready three measures of, of fine. So he tells Sarah, you know, we got some people here we want to feed. And, and he's feeling something here. So immediately we go to the first one, and here we are going, God, a friend of God, continually worship him. So Abraham, he's the only one, when you read in Genesis, that started the tent, I mean the altar worship. 
He did well, after Noah. Noah did the altar after he got off the ark. Because Noah, you got to understand, Noah, glory to God, got firsthand information because he was on that side of the water. Adam and them talked with him. Their brother was 900, close to 1,000 years old. Methuselah, 969 years old. You, you know how much God they passed on? I told you what Adam told uh, uh, Cain and Abel. That's where we lived till Mama ate us out of the house and home. He looked right over there. Eden was still there. Can't go in there. Mama just, <laughs> I listened to her. <laughs> that always gets, that always makes the women feel warm and fuzzy like. <laughs> that makes the women feel like. Yeah, Mama ate us out of house and home. We just, there's where we used to stay. <laughs> yeah, man, now we got work. So, but after that, the last altar worship you pick up. Now, this is really ironic because isn't it something? Don't play the devil. Don't play him. Because here's what blew my mind. How could a, a Noah... Noah's crew, Ham, Sham, Japheth, they come, and everybody within a period of time become heathens. I said, come on, I'm going to tell you what. You hook up with an unsaved person, chances are you're going to fight like hell to get saved, to stay saved. I'm, I'm serious. You, can't, you cannot be an alcoholic and go back to the bar. I'm just going back here to witness. You cannot use drugs and hang around drug people. You can't, my God. Are y'all crazy? You can't love looking at women and say, passing out tracks around the prostitutes. After a while, you ain't throwing no tracks. I said, come, y'all, y'all listen to this. You cannot, that, look, that's a proven fact. Ham, sham, Japheth. Everybody was heathen, even Abraham, worshiping sun, moon, stars, dirt, rocks, trees. Now, how in the world can you lead? Let me tell you something with you. That's why you got to get saved to stay saved. If you ain't got no God in saved salvation, you ain't going to, oh, my God. And then you got to fight a good fight of faith. You got to fight to stay saved. I don't take salvation lightly. I'm saved. Come to church next Sunday. I ain't opening my Bible till next Sunday. If I can find it in the church. <laughs> Anybody see my Bible? I got kids. Kids are there. Well, now we, we got phones. Thank God for cell phones with Bible apps. <laughs> Otherwise, you wouldn't have a Bible. How many know that be the truth? That's why. Isn't that ironic? You passing out Bibles in the church and saints. You passing Bibles out on Sunday. Who need a Bible? Three quarters of the church raise their hand. God looked at that man, touched his heart. God selected you. Don't think. By any stretch of your imagination, you're that holy. I just, I just wanted, I just got saved. No, God had to select you. God looked and said, I want Alexander. I remember when, when, when uh, El Alexander, man, I, I, I wouldn't even talk to him. He go on to church and I thought Calvin was bringing in a pit bull. I said, God, Jesus, that joke is sitting over there. You better not get me stand. I'll stand, I'll beat him slap. <laughs> I looked at him like, Jesus, so she married that mean man. <laughs> she knew, though. Oh, yeah. See, God, let me see. Oh, yes. That's in here. I got to hurry up. Let me go because this is here. They continually worship. And then, then a friend of God puts prioritize, a prioritize your time with God. You cannot go. Now, I'm going to share, this is me. If, if I miss 
talking with God. But first of all, I don't miss talking with God. I don't. I'm, I'm driving my car. I'm driving the bus. Thank you, Jesus. I go off in tongues. I don't go off letting them hear me. You know, they be done threw me off the bus. I got a camera up there. He got over on, so you got to get him off the bus. <laughs> don't let him drive the bus. No, I be, how many pray? I be, my God, I'm laying in the dentist chair speaking in tongues. Hey, when I, every surgery, I'm praying. Oh, God. I go to sleep. When they put me to sleep, I'm like, God, he moved. How? When I wake up, oh, God, I think, hey. And I don't know who, what, where, when. I was laying in them covers last, all this past week. Man, I'm laying in them covers. Lord, I thank you. I got a warm bed. I got a place to, oh, God, I thank you. Look, the heat is still running. Man, when I left, when I left Thursday morning, uh, Friday morning, because it was Thursday night when Joe left, I said, Lord, bless that man. Bless him. Bless that man. Then I'm riding. I'm driving my truck with no four or two wheel. I said, Lord, just bless this old truck. But then I said, Lord, I thank you. How many just thank God? Just a, I mean, I just thank him. I just, I'll, I'll, I'll start out just saying, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I'm one of them old. I cut my teeth on the Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's how I got the Holy Ghost. Jesus, 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 Jesus. And then I'll kick it in with, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll go to sleep thanking him. I, I don't know. I'll go to God. I got to give God time. I didn't put... I do this yearly. I put a read through the Bible, and then I'll do the Psalms and Proverbs 31 days. Then I'll read some more. Because here's what I found out. I can sit there and watch TV. An hour and a half to two hours and gone. I'm like, gee, I'll start reading my Bible. And now what I've done, I've trained, I beat myself under subjection. Man, you better read you better then after a while yourself won't don't want to get beat y'all don't hear me yourself will say don't beat me i'll read i'll read don't beat me don't don't beat me i'll read paul said i beat myself when jesus said take up your cross why do you think he, he says an, an analogy take up your cross daily He's telling you when you get up, you got to fight a good fight of faith. You getting jawed up with folk on the road. You getting hot with the boss. You get children cutting up. There's a lot that you deal with on a daily basis. I want to share this before I forget it. You'll never physically live in tomorrow. You'll never physically live in tomorrow. Because when you get into it, it's today. You will never physically step into tomorrow. Let me step into But we always try. We're always trying to step into tomorrow. You'll never step physically in tomorrow. Because when tomorrow comes, it's today. That's why he said, this is the day that the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. He just said, tomorrow is the day that the Lord knows. He said, day. Today is the day. That's why today I'm going to praise him. I don't know about tomorrow, but today I'm going to lift up holy hands and bless his name. Today, today, today. You ain't going to physically step in no tomorrow. So we find he did all this, and, and, and then, then we go on. He, he spent time with God. Amen. And after spending time with God, a friend, glory to God, is zealous for serving God. See, today, y'all some, some zealously serving God folk. You know how many folks said, I ain't getting out here. Today? It's too cold. Now, if I was older, my wife, Cynthia got up early. Cynthia always get up early just to mess with me. She's up. I'm looking at her like, oh, she's telling me I got to get up now. So I peep at the clock. Now I can see the clock without my glasses before I feel. I look at the clock. I said, man, it's like 7, 10, 7, 20. She up. Uh, I hear the ironing board. I'm like, God, what is she telling me? Is she telling me to go out to prayer? Or get... <laughs> Amen. Isn't it good to have somebody to make you, to just stir your pot? Back in the day, mothers used to get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Everything going to church. Get up. 
Everybody going to church. Cat, get the dog ready. Everything going. <laughs> Bringing the goldfish into church. Everything. For me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord. Everything. Everything. Woo, now, hey. Love serving God. That's why, my God, Sunday, Christmas. I was so sick Christmas. My God, I was just sick. And then Carolyn stepped in with the kids. Normally, I would have said, set them down. I got to preach. I said, keep them up. Keep them babies. Keep them up. Them babies was preaching in play. Then I heard about Francine and, and Ingrid and what they did for the mothers. I'm looking. I'm looking at y'all and looking. I said to myself, I said, Lord, thank you for these good people. Thank you. Yeah, you know, you can have some folk just mad. This church is folk are fighting over dumb stuff. Who told you you could sit in my chair? You said that's a mother chair. Get out of my chair. Parking in the pastor spot. Who told you? I'll Punch a hole in your tires. Go to four flat tires in the passenger spot. You won't park in it again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, musicians, choir. Choir won't sing. You singing my song. Singing out a key. Singing four keys when it's only one. Uh, but it's good to be someplace where folk love the Lord. Don't mind praising them. Don't mind lifting up holy hands in the sanctuary. Don't mind serving him. Serve him when it's cold. Serve him when it's hot. Oh, God, I thank you. Serve him when you're sick. Young man coming in with a fever. He said, I'm still got to play. I'm going to serve him because I got to. I'm going to serve him. Oh, God, I love you. See, God loves being served. And the more you serve him, the more he serves you. Oh, God, I love you. Oh, I got to finish this thing. I got to finish this thing. Oh. Friends of God are generous. I know, I know something. My God. 20, 30 minutes went so fast. <laughs> They're going to just go on the call. Y'all don't mind, y'all don't want, y'all, can I go on? Y'all ain't got to tell me. I know y'all, most of your family, 99.9% .9 of y'all, and the other percent is just distant family. Y'all give. I know when I went to get this building, I said to myself, man, I'm going to be stuck out there. So I drug Deacon Coleman in, so I said, and me and him going to be stuck out <laughs> there. Me and him, and y'all gave. I ain't not grudgingly, nor out of necessity, just cheerful giver. Gave when you didn't have, gave when you had. Y'all just give. And I'm gonna tell you something. I God loves, see, because I'm gonna share something with you. Uh, the more you give to God, the more God gives to you. Now I'm not telling you what I think, I'm telling you what I do. That's okay, Deke. Yesterday, we went and pushed this. We went in the house, this man laying up on a bed of affliction. One of those beds. I call it a bed of affliction. He was like, he's laying up there, a hospital bed. That's it. A bed of affliction, a hospital bed. That's a bed of affliction, right? So he laid up there, breathing in the tubes and stuff. And uh, he said, nobody would dig him out. He said, nobody would. And the nurse had to come. And the ambulance had to come. So me and this brother went over and pushed that brother out, and we digging. Now, I mean, we dug a nice pair, dug two pairs, as a matter of fact. One they can cut across the grass, they wouldn't get to him fast, and one if they want to walk slow around the sidewalk. And uh, I heard D, and he's laying up there in that bed. He said, how much I owe you? How much I owe you? And D said, it ain't a charge. If you want to give us, you give us. We, we ain't got no price. And uh, he came out, he said he gave us $20. I felt like giving it back to him. But I looked at my gas tank, I said, yeah, we can put it in there. <laughs> I got enough sense to know that that, that needle need to be moved. And, and, uh, but you know something, I'm going to share something with you. God blessed us. 
He blessed us. You see, when you do stuff for people, y'all, y'all, my God in this house, when you, when you go out of your way to bless somebody, help somebody, that's serving God. God said, Jesus, when he went up to heaven, the next time he come back, well, he's coming back in the air. But the next time he come back, he coming back to judge, man. I'm coming back with him. I'm going to be riding a pinto horse, man. I'm going to be riding. yeah <laughs> Glory to God. Y'all going to see this crazy brother with a hat. Yay! Oh, he's going to say, I made it. <laughs> I'm be riding, boy. How many come back riding with him? Generous, generous, generous. Y'all some good giving folk. Y'all notice I ain't set up here. I don't have to beg y'all. I don't have to make the money hard or soft. Make it even or flat. Y'all bless. I thank God for y'all. Y'all some good folk, man. Y'all friends. Look, a friend, a friend of God inspires others. They, I'm looking at YouTube last night. I, I, I'm doing a lot of just popping. And this individual on YouTube, you got some of the things that's kind of unique. He, he's upset with a lot of ministries, a lot. He said he tried to get saved. Grandmother, mom and dad divorced when he was like four or five years old. Grandmom raised him up, you know, to the point. And, and at a young age of 15 years old, he wanted to be in the church. But he said the church has so much dumb stuff, crazy stuff, crazy. Do you know, folk, watch us. They watch us. They looking at us. You know, you can say whatever, but people get saved because of lives that people live. Oh, that was good. God will touch the life. How many of y'all got saved, saw somebody and they invited you? And you went on. I got saved because somebody invited me. This 24-year-old bat, and I'll never forget. Isn't this ironic? 1973, a 24-year-old Baptist preacher. I was Catholic. He said... I'm doing a revival. Y'all want to come? Man, I'm Catholic. Part of Nostra Cordina under the Nobis Hoodie. A little Latin for you, buddy. Give you a little Latin. Hello, cold duck. Drinking some cold duck. Then me and the brother, me and Paul were talking. Man, we're in trouble. They're talking about putting us in Leavenworth. Oh, let's go to church. Let's go to somebody's church. Man, I got there and got saved. That 20 seat. Listen, listen. When God will touch somebody to move on your behalf, that young man, boy, took us, he pre I just remember, just a little part, I ain't reading no Bible. Get up there reading the Bible. Open your Bible. Open what? Catechism. Then I had no Bible. And he started preaching. He preached to the little 24-year-old brother in England, England uh, chapel. And man, let me share something with you. My God, God moves. You got to get with the moving. The day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart as in the day of provocation. God is moving. You can hear some. I'm going to tell you when you know it's God. You ever been in a situation and, and, there, and there's an altar call, whatever, and you sit there and all of a sudden you lock and you start hearing all kinds of dumb stuff. People are going to be looking at me. People are going to be laughing. Here they go. Here they go. I go up there and they, they're just messing. Then they start coming with dumb stuff about the preacher. He ain't lying. He look at him. He been up there forever. Get him, him, set him, set him. That's when you know the devil's trying to mess. That's when God wants to bless. I wish somebody heard that. God wants to bless it. When you start hearing dumb stuff, that's when God is really trying to get you over. That was good, man. Devil start recalling all kinds of dumb stuff. Remember, yeah, he ain't no good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't you know that's what he's doing to us? And he, he, he's the accuser of the brethren. He gets up there before God. He, he lying again. He, he lying. Look at him. Look at him cursing. He cursing. See? He's supposed to be saying, Father, and I still quote it. He lurks. He's cursing. Look at him. Talking about his wife. Talking about the children. He mad. He cursing. He fighting. And look at her. Look at her. Look at her. She ain't no good. And, and, and Jesus have to look and say, I got this. I got this. But don't you think after a while he gets tired? Look at this. Oh my God, you're acting like a knucklehead again? How many times you want to get sick on that roller coaster? You got sick every time you rode it. 
Now it's the tenth time you're sick again. Okay. Friends of God grow in the knowledge of God's will. That's why Bible study is the least attended place. Least attended. Let me share something with you. <clears throat> I talked to Cynthia. Well, let me put it this way. Cynthia talked to me so much. I'm looking at the Beverly Hillbillies <laughs> laughing. She talking. She talking. She talking. But I, we talked so much. We talked, talked. Things we wanted, things we didn't want, things we like, things we don't like. Who we didn't like, who we like. We talking. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. We talking. Talking. After a while, now at this stage of the game, she ain't got to say nothing. I just look at her. Yeah, I know. <laughs> how, how many know what I'm talking about? You get around a person long enough. That's how come a mother and a father can look at their children and just look at them. You got to be around God. You can't just get saved today and think you know God. You got to be around God. You got to be around people of God. Amen. Then you start knowing him. Man, I want to know God so that he, when he, I can feel it. Don't go left. Okay. Don't buy that. You got it. Put the money back in your pocket. Yes, sir. Don't date that one. Okay, Lord. Y'all hear me? Young folk, you better get, oh, today you better get, they don't do blood work no more. Of all the times in the history of the world, you don't have to do blood work. I had to do blood work, cough in a bottle and stuff. Now, no blood work. You could be marrying a scoundrel. That joker can have so many diseases, and you walking down the aisle to death do his part. Yeah, tomorrow, about that time, you'll be just as dead as a doornail. I'm doing a marriage today, and next, next two weeks, I'm doing a eulogy. Yo, 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 amen. You got to know them that labor among you. You got to know them. That's like I'm dads today. My God, I thank God. Pat, there, Pat, right there. Pat, tell you. I saw a resume. Pat came up to me with a full laid out resume. Yeah, you're right there. He said, you going to marry my daughter? Yes, sir. I said, what you got? I got finished talking to the brother. I'll marry you. <laughs> no, no, you can't. No, I, got, I said, God, hey, you, I see you're a good brother. You care. Yeah. My brothers pull up to my house. Beep, beep, beep. I go out. <laughs> well, what you want? Is Michelle home? Yes, yeah, she home, but she ain't here for you. You get to step. Get out of my yard. One joke, I came out, I put the gloves on. He knew I'd about ready to spank. Either you spank me or I'm gonna spank you. But somebody gonna get spanked in this yard. Tell him my daughter, you ain't gotta work. Who he think he is? Oh, I'll tell you who he is. Get ready to show you right about now. Michelle, she's right there. You didn't wear your hat backwards. Come to see my daughter. Your hat laid in the back, turn it around. When you got to my house, flip it around. I can read what's on your hat and then we can talk. So today, brothers, you got your hands full. James, God bless your heart. I'm with, I'm with you, though, brother. Girls, I'm with you. Young ladies, I tell brothers this. You want a good wife, go to mama. Talk to her. Mom, mom, what do you think? Yeah, baby, what do you think, mom? Mama, was, mama wrote me all the way to Texas. I'm in the Philippines. Mama writing me. She's a good girl, son. <laughs> I don't know about some of the other ones, but she's a good girl. When my, I'm reading, Mom, I'm taking them notes, packing it down, putting it on data bank. She's a good girl. I like her. When Mama says she like her, she like her. I know some people talk about mother-in-laws and whatever, but glory to God. Friends of God are intercessors. They're intercessors. It's time that we stop beating one another up and start praying for one another. A Abraham, God came, and here's what he said. He said, should we hide this thing from Abraham, seeing that he's a father? No, he's a friend. So they started talking. And he, told, he told Abraham, we could better go down there and we're going to tear Sodom and Gomorrah up. Whoa, Lot's down there. Lot, Lot. 
that's my nephew. He said, whoa. He said, 50. He said, no, I won't destroy it for 50 sake. Who do you think it's 50? 45. He said, he, 45. Now, Lot thinking. Now, now, first of all, Lot knew. I mean, Abraham knew Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, I better hit 30. I'm going to hit 20. Uh, he went down to 10. 10. He went down to 10. Now, y'all listen to this. He went down to 10. So, now you would think 10 family members, somebody got to love the Lord. 10? Are you serious? If God came to me and said 10, I'd be like, Lord, we got to do better than that. A whole bunch of folks say, a bunch of family. And that brother prayed. He interceded for Lot. Now, here's what's deep. Now, by rights, the agreement was 10. But when he walked out of there, it was Lot, the two daughters, and the wife. But the wife had too much Sodom in her. She had too much Sodom in her. She was no good for nothing. And, and, and the angel told her, don't look back. That's, don't you know, my God, when you get saved, don't look back. Are you kidding me? Oh, I'm looking back. Uh, man, I remember we used to do the jitterbug and drink. And, oh, no, you got to start forgetting that stuff. I mean, there's a time and a place. Because here's what the devil knows. He knows what's in you. Because you keep telling him. He knows it. Oh, man, I smoked some, some dope, some herb that'll knock your head off. Matter of fact, it literally did. <laughs> show you how ignorant. Let me show you how ignorant. I'm in Vietnam. Guy had crushed up, look like nuts and berries, I don't know, in a pipe. He puts a, a hundred seats, uh, NPC note, which is a uh, hundred dollars. He said, if you can hit this pipe and walk over and grab the hundred dollars, it's yours. He had a line. I mean, there was a line of us. Line. I got up there and I hit that pipe. Not it was just a stump. I hit that pipe and literally my head seemed like foul. I passed out. I was literally, when I woke up, I was looking at the sky. This is God. You know I ain't standing up here lying because I mean I got back in line. Get back in line. I'm going. <laughs> After a while. He could have took the NBC note and threw it away. After about the third time, I said, are you crazy? Anything that will knock you out. I mean, I was out. I was out. Got back in line. One of the best messages I ever preached. Somebody prayed for me. Somebody back here was praying. Lord, he's a nut. He'll get back in line, but save him. He'll do whatever, but save him. Don't you know, when you start praying, the gates of heaven open up and listen. God, save him. Move on his behalf. Move on her behalf. God, touch in the name of Jesus. That's when you get serious. You down there, Lord, pounding God, save him. When you want somebody to say, God, I'll save. What what did your mama do? Save Alexander, save him. Save him, Lord. He, uh, he's a good boy. Save him. Don't you know when good friends of God intercedes? They're intercessors. It's time we stop talking about folks and start praying for them. I'm going to say this is, this is straight off God's press. If you can talk about them, you can pray for them. That's hot off God's press. If you can talk about them, 